Well, welcome to a brand new series of Bring Your Own Ball on FC TV, the channel dedicated to FC United of Manchester and shot in such high quality it can actually be seen on Mars. Up ahead, a footballing discussion with a man, two men, some might say the men. We'll be having all the fun of the building site on a Sunday afternoon and finding out just how this brand new ground can accommodate the Elton Wellsby TV Memorial Studio. Tackles. <laughs> Right then, before you start going on with yourself, this is all compulsory and there's very little opportunity to accessorise. So we have succeeded where Alan Partridge failed. We've got a second series. And as we discuss non-league football for the next nine months, the media studies teacher who said that I would never make it is once more notable by his or her absence. Coming up, we've got a man who knows all about this ground. It's a project manager, Dave Payne. But first, it's time to press pause press play again and listen to the latest headlines with cockers. I'm just going to carry on walking. I don't know where and I don't know why. The start to the 2014-15 season will probably be mostly remembered for the number of draws FC United have endured thus far. Safe to say though that FC United's start to the season has been a steady one, with a total of two wins and six draws in their opening eight games. But it's been an unbeaten start nonetheless, with wins coming away at Blythe Spartans and a 3-1 home win against Ramsbottom United. We've also seen some new faces and departures from the club. Long-standing names like defender Lee Neville and attacking midfielder Ashley Mulholland have been replaced by the likes of Chris Lynch and Andy Welsh. While off the pitch, work on FC United's new home at Broadhurst Park continues apace. And despite delays on the laying of the pitch and construction of the St Mary's Road End, the moving in date for the club's new home remains within touching distance. We'll have more on this in this month's edition of Bring Your Own Ball. Back to you, Andrew. Lovely stuff, Cockers. Thanks very much. So welcome to Broadhurst Park with its pitch that can only be described as floating grass. It looks perfect for a good old fashioned game of footy soccer. And to discuss all sorts of kickabouts, we were to have had the team manager, Carl Marginson, but he's had to fly away at short notice to a high profile meeting in Geneva with Banky Moon. So instead, here is a chat that I've conducted with Andrew Kevin Walsh over there by the Beef Burgers. So we put you in front of the stand in which you're going to have your presidential palace, penthouse and hot tub for the game. It's quite exciting this, isn't it? Presidential palace makes a difference to uh, helicopters, I suppose. But yeah, it is, it is exciting. Um, I think we've been doing tours now for the last five or six weeks and everybody who comes around is blown away by it. I think you've got a great insight from the photographs and the videos that have been, on, have been online, but when you're here, you really start to appreciate the scale of it and what we're actually getting for the money and the effort that we put in. Talking about money, what more do you need from people? Um, we need another few hundred thousand pounds really. Um, money's still coming in, community shares are still coming in, development fund of course, now we've started the season again, uh, the barrels are um, starting to contribute to the DF again. But um, if we're going to complete this how we want to complete it, then if people have got some spare cash and they can put it in the DF, all the better. We've um, got the holiday draw relaunched, the treasure line, uh, but also uh, we're looking for people to, to put more money into community shares as well. And, and um, just a couple of weeks ago, we had another £20,000 put into community shares. I mean, the more that we have of that, then the better we're going to be. On the pitch, and not yet the one behind us, but the one primarily at Bowerfold and other places, five draws out of seven, but unbeaten. So how have you seen the start of the season? Uh, I think it, it, it is five draws out of seven. It's, it's, it's um, for, for me... Um, we've tightened up the defence. I think everybody pre prior to the start of the season was worried how we we're going to replace Raglan and Davis. And I think Margin, the coaching staff and the scouting staff have got to be congratulated for what they've done in bringing in the centre halves that they have. You know, we've suffered injuries to James Knowles and Sean Connor. They were both primary targets for the start of the season. Uh, Andy Person's unfortunate uh, sending off. 
So we've had three three guys that we lined up to be the centre halves have been out um, during that during that seven game period, but Margie's not stood still because of the network of scouting that we've got now through Steve Woods and Wayne Clark and others. We've we've brought in Chris Lynch and we've also brought in uh, Luke Ashworth. So five goals conceded in those seven games. If we can keep the number of goals conceded down below the number of games we're playing, then we're going to be there or thereabouts. Tom Greaves, Mike Norton um, are not fully fit yet. Um, Tom last season played nearly 50 games for us and that was the first time he's played more than 25 or 26 games in the last three or four seasons because he's been on and off the bench and it's put a, a strain on, his, uh, on him uh, physically and another you know, strength of the club is we've got a great team of physios and medical staff, strength and conditioning coach, nutritionist who've then been working with Tom since the close of last season to strengthen um, his core, his lower abdomen and everything and, and, and uh, the issues he's been having with, it, with, uh, with tightness in the groin uh, for the last few games of last season and he's now starting to fire. Norton's got a bad back uh, as a consequence of the, the guys are Tyler and you know, it's, it's, a, it's an industrial injury and, he, and we, we've nursed that through for the last few seasons. This is a consequence of part-time football. You know, Liam Brownhill's been out with, with, uh, with pains as well in, the, in, his, in his leg, again, because, of, because of it, he's got a manual job. So we're working with these lads and um, keeping a tight bat line um, and um, getting points on the board when our strike force isn't um, isn't fully fit, I think bodes well for the future, and uh, we we should be we should be proud of, of what we've achieved as a club. Marge's had to give some bad news to a few players, Nelson Motta and Ashley Mulholland, and, and in particular probably Lee Neville was, might have been the biggest surprise to people. Why has that happened? How did that come about? Again, it's it's, it's more um, brave decisions on behalf of the management team uh, because we've got great number of young lads coming through now that we need to create some opportunities for. At the Marine game, we saw Tom Brown make his first team debut. Uh, prior to that, we've had John Pritchard playing um, in, in pre-season friendlies. There's other lads like Dean Hope, who's come through our college system. He qualified and played for England uh, through, the, through, the, through the college team. And um, he's, he's knocking on the door. He's putting some great performances with, the, with our reserves and youth teams. And then we've also got Frank Van Gils, who people will be aware of. He's played for us before in the first team. Um, you know, Frank's a lad who um, City signed for, for a five-figure sum from Holland. Another lad, uh, Justin Johnson, a winger, who, uh, who started off at Sparta Rotterdam, again, has come through the college system. And then there's Michael Brewster as well, who people um, who've been watching the reserves and youth will have, will have seen. Again, another lad from Oldham, just like, just like John Pritchard. Um, we've got a mix within within that, those, those group of lads of of, uh, of strong defensive midfielders, but a bit of flair, bit of pace. Um, Justin himself is a, is an exciting prospect on the wing, and w these are we. If we're going to be serious about developing talent, we've got to give space for those players to start to show in the first team. And the manager has decided that uh, that those three lads that have gone this week um, are the ones who are going to make way. Sad it is to see him go. You know, Lee Neville's played nearly 200 games for us. He's been a fantastic servant of the club, put in a real shift and, and made sacrifices. They all do at this level um, to, to come and play for us. People think because they're getting paid that, that, uh, that it should be a privilege. And they do see it as a privilege, the lads, but they also, supporters, need to recognise that to play non-league football, to play part-time football, there's a great deal of juggling of your personal life and your work life to be able to get out on the field on a on a on a match day. There's the attachment to youth is a natural thing, I suppose, at this club. But um, and you know, for the first time, the club's now in the FA Youth Cup as well. Exciting. Um, something we've we've targeted for some time. Um, we couldn't do it previously without our own ground. This year, because we've got our own ground, the FA have allowed our application. Though, ironically, oh, <laughs> the early rounds. We're not going to have the ground finished, but again, testament to the FA to, to allowing us to, to continue. First game uh, up against Macclesfield, and I'm not sure whether it, it, that, that game will have been played by the time this is broadcast. But so far, the lads that we've we've uh, we've recruited are looking looking like a real serious unit. I should say the reserves and the youth setup have had a bit of a revamp, so can I explain that really? Yeah, we've uh, for for many years now we've had a we've had a college. Uh, set up. Um, Carl and, and other coaches have been working 
uh, with the college, coaching their, coaching their players and creating opportunities for, for young lads like, like Scott Cheatham, um, who was on the bench against Marine, um, to come through and, and play for the first team. And then that's, that's been supplemented by our own youth, our own youth offer. For years, we were in the Northwest Youth Alliance. This year, we're looking to put a team into the Conference Youth Alliance, playing, um, playing professional clubs across the Northwest and the North of England. And then the, within the Conference Youth Alliance, if you, if you win your region, win your division, then you go on to, to, to national finals and national cup competitions. So a real challenge for us. Those lads that we recruited this year are actually going to be based here at the ground. We've got a classroom here. We've got an artificial pitch. We'll be coaching them. And, uh, and putting them through their, uh, their academic studies here within the ground. And again, testament to our relationship with the college that we've been able to do that. So we'll then have college youth players and we'll also have our own youth players here. And you know, many people will, uh, who follow our youth and development work over the, over the years will know that we've dipped our toe in the water of having a reserve side and played, we played in the Cheshire League for quite a while. Um, last year, we were in the Lancashire League and the Galaxy Lancashire League. United A and B teams used to play in the in the Lancashire League, and now that league is split east and west of the Pennines. Last year we were in we were in the East Division, which we considered pulling out if we we're going to be in that division again because it, we don't think it gave us the challenge to the players that that we uh, that we wanted to see. The West Division um, is much stronger, and the league agreed to move us into the into the West Division. So we're going to have a reserve set up in the. Uh, in, in the West Division of, of the Lancashire League. There's a change in name there. In the last year, we were calling the development squad because we were neither youth team nor with the reserves. But um, on reflection, the, the, the manager and the coaching staff have, have considered that that might have sent the wrong message to the players, that they're one step further away from the first team. We want to get across to them, whether they be 16, 17 or 19, that they are one step away from the first team. We don't have anybody in our youth setup or our, or our development setup who isn't a potential first team player and we need to get that across to him and get it across to him sharp. You didn't consider the elite development squad? No, that wasn't something that ever actually came across our radar, no. Why? It's a wonderful name, it's not at all laughable. <laughs> it is, it is, it is a, extremely laughable uh, uh, to, to, to talk about players being the elite development squad. You won't, be, you won't be developing players unless you believe that they are going to be the elite within your football club. From our point of view, every player that comes through we want to see in the first team. Some players don't make it, but we give them every opportunity to reach their full playing potential. Finally then, how do you see it? Because one way or the other, this will be a season to remember, won't it? Changing grounds and all that. Are you confident that there won't be a stinker of a finale for the first time in like half the club's history? It's football and you can never be certain about anything and that's what keeps drawing us back in. You know, it's, it's, it's the defeats as much as the, much as the victories that draw people in. You want to see good, fast, attacking, entertaining football. You also want to see your team win. And there's always a balance. You know, at this club, people want to, want to have a go and want to, you know, want to block us out, as we've seen all too often this season. You know, the Marine game, clean sheet at both ends, but Marine came to that game not wanting to let us score. Barwell. Barwell's the, Barwell's the classic example. You know, and it was a very strong Barwell side that every time we did get past anybody, we got kicked up in the air. And supporters have got to be patient. We, we want to get out, of this, uh, get out of this division. We want to play entertaining football. We're working with part-time resources. What we will have this year, for the first time in our history, we'll have our own base. And that, we believe, is going to make a huge difference because players will have somewhere that they can call home as well as supporters having somewhere they can call home. And that makes a big difference in the, in the changing room and a big difference to the psychology of the players. And you get your hot tub. Thanks, Andy. I'll let you share it. <laughs> nice. Good man. <laughs> now, just to clarify for all those younger viewers out there in Tinter World, this backdrop is not just some green screen thing from Minecraft. We are actually outside. And for a less superficial and more detailed look at what that's all about, here's Dr. K. So here we are. It's the 7th of September, and we're just outside the ground in Broadhurst Clough. Early on this morning, there was about a dozen FC diggers turned up to do some work on the drainage because what was happening was where we're going to have the 3G and an artificial pitch there, there was some flooding happening and it was because this drainage channel here to the two ponds in the clough was a bit uh, silted up. 
So volunteers from FC United came along and we've been digging out mud um, since early in the morning. Um, and this is the result, as you can see. You can now see that water is able to get out of that pipe. So any, anything that rains on the pitch, this is the drainage channel, it can go down. We reckon we've done about a third of it. Um, so in two weeks time, we're gonna meet again and we're gonna carry on the work. It was quite good fun actually. You know, meet up, have a chat with people, do a bit of digging. Then we had a spot to eat. It was quite nice. So if you're interested in coming along, this is where you find out about it. So here's a quick little video report of the diggers in action. <laughs> It appears to be a concrete floor. Yeah. Is it concrete, yeah? Yeah, yeah. we're down to So that. If, if we can get that exposed, then we're down to where it should be, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going well here. All right, don't be boasting now. Right up, Graham. Got to keep the spirits up. Swearing's an integral part of the process. Go to talk to the plants. Still not deep enough. What have you been doing, mate? Me? I've been um, forging my way from the lower fields all the way to this lovely, lovely channel. Um, we've not managed to do what that sign, which you'll get a shot of in a moment, says, but that's the aim. The aim is that we will or won't be allowing swimming in here on a match day. Well, what we've done is we've taken some of the big um, branches from over there that were block blocking up the stream, chopped them all down, and then we made them into a, hopefully, a home for small animals for over the winter, a wood pile and a pile of leaves, because then hopefully hedgehogs or insects will find somewhere to live in the winter months. Uh, all right, so as a follow-up to where we were last week, a uh, good turnout today and we've been able to dig out the areas that were of concern. You can see down here the outfall from the community pitches is now clear and water flowing and it was a foot underwater a week ago. So we're achieving the objective of getting the drainage on the pitch working and uh, tidying up the clough while we're at it. But as you're coming that way, you're bringing the water so it's getting well, that's what I'm thinking. closer. You know, they've seen it being a pond. Have they? They've seen it being a pond, it might not actually. I think it probably will. There's, definite, there's a dip here, isn't there? Yeah. You can see it on your definite hollow here. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right um, we're just being a five minute uh, tea break with no tea. Uh, this is the crew that's been out this morning <laughs> digging ditches, getting covered in mud. More mud you'll ever see in any Glastonbury festival. We've digged, digged, or we dug okay. big channels. We've shifted stuff. It's the first session of many to come. Do come along and join in. Dr. K there, here in Moston, with a perfect segue into our next guest, the project manager, Dave Payne. It's my first time on site, Dave, and it looks like a proper thing now. It's quite exciting. We're getting there. We're getting there, yeah. Starting to take shape, isn't it? It looks a lot better now. We've got a big green thing in the middle, our pitch. <laughs> Talk about the pitch shortly. First, uh, in the edit, they'll be floating over right about now, a picture of that green empty space over on the east. So tell us what's going to go down there and what needs to happen first. Well, that's our east stand. That's the um, stand we've salvaged from Northwich Bix. Um, as probably people mostly know, we've had some issues with that. Um, on the positive side, uh, that's what enabled us to push the buttons on, on the whole contract because by salvaging it from Northwich Bix, we made some considerable financial savings. Without that, we, we were struggling this time last year. 
And all was going well. And uh, we had a contractor who was a friend of the club uh, who was um, demolishing it, taking it to his yard, reconfiguring it to our design. And that was going okay. And then unfortunately the contractor went into administration. It's quite, quite a sad story behind it really. It wasn't just business. It was, there were some personal issues attached to the company which are quite, quite sad really. Um, and that, that hit us like a bit of a, a bolt from the blue really. We didn't really didn't see that one coming. Um, you can't foresee these things. Um, so we had to kind of dust ourselves down. It was a shock. We had to dust ourselves down and find a, find a plan. We, we investigated a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. Um, and then um, through a series of phone calls, conversations and meetings, we, um, we managed to um, get in contact with the guy who had originally designed the stand at Northwich. And he'd also taken it down and moved it from the drill field. So he was very familiar with the stand. Um, whereas everybody else we were talking to didn't want to touch it with a barge pole. Very complicated operation to reconfigure an old stand to a new design. It needs warranties and insurances. Um, but this guy's been very positive about it um, because he feels an affinity with it. Anyway, it was his structure years ago. Um, so we've got him on board. And so that, that's, that's got the thing back on track again. Um, but again, it's not without its complications, you know, because he wasn't just sitting around waiting for a, some random fo football club to phone him up. Um, he had a, a significant workload, so he's tried to fit that into his existing workload, and then he's got to work with the original contractor who, who was working on it, and then our structural engineers have got to get involved in that. And so you can imagine it's quite a complicated process, and then we've all got to coordinate that with the guys on site, Thomas Barnes. Um, so that's been uh, a quite a frustrating process. We had hoped that would be quicker than it was, but these things take time. So, but we're now in a position where uh, all the buttons, all the I's have been dotted, the T's have been crossed, the structural design's done. Um, 90 odd percent of the reconfiguration engineering work has been done. The steel's now moving to be shot blasted and painted. Uh, and it should be on site by the end of the month. And then it's probably about a four to six week period to erect it. Uh, and then you'll start to see four sides to a football ground, which will be fabulous. It'll look lovely then, but what you're saying is every little problem has a knock-on effect, there's a domino effect and it holds everything up. So you're looking probably, what, six to eight weeks behind schedule now? Yeah, correct. So are we say are we going to see an early Christmas present? Is that what's going to happen here? In the words of Alan Gowland, it'll be over by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. We've had a Smith reference and Alan, Alan Gowland. Fantastic. <laughs> it can only go uphill uh, from here. Tell me about the fascial references and the drainage in the lower field. For some time now, we've been a bit confused as to why parts of the site haven't been draining as quickly. It's been a funny old summer. It's either we've either had flash floods or drought periods. So the ground's either been the ground we've been working has either been bone dry and ironically too dry to work with. On one occasion, we had to even try and get the fire brigade in to water the sand that had been laid on the pitch because it was drying out and it was blowing away. Or we've had flash floods and the whole thing's just got sodden overnight and it's been like the summer and we've had to work in that or, or stop work because of it and we've been been confused as to why this was the case and we've been investigating the drains and all sorts of things and then most recently we've found that um, where the water drains out to the outfall drain which is on the southern end of the site there's a, a pond system which it drains down naturally to and that had silted up with months and months of, of water and silt coming off site. So the drainage in, the, in answer to your question, the drainage in the lower field has been remediated now by our diggers group who are kind of a collection of uh, green fingered friends of the club, members of the club who do good works around the ground. Um, and they've been in there this morning actually and last week digging out, literally digging out the drainage in the lower pond to allow the water to flow. So we think that'll start to uh, assist the drains and expedite the drainage of the site now. All this is positive for the local environment. And it's going to be great for Moston Juniors as well. I think they'll have the finest football facility as a junior football club in the city. I can't think of a better one. It's going to be fabulous for them. It's, it's been hard for them because they like to go off site for a while. Uh, and I'm sure they would have wanted to be on site before now. But um, when they do get here, they're going to have a fabulous facility. Still looking finally for more volunteers because I know they're doing a great job. 
We're always looking for volunteers. If anybody has any ideas as to how they can assist the club um, in any way at all, um, get in contact with me. I'm the project manager. You can get hold of me on project man on my email address, which is project manager at fc united.co.uk. There we are. What's been? What are you most looking forward to now? What's the big step that's going to make you very excited? Sat in that stand, with me, d me dad and my little lad, and watch the team come out on the first day. That's what I'm looking forward to. But well, you don't know when that's going to be. It'll be soon. <laughs> It'll be soon. <laughs> we can't put a date on it. It'd be wrong to put a date on it. But we've waited nine years for this, haven't we? A few more weeks, we'll be okay. We'll get there as soon as we can. Everybody's working their tripe off behind the scenes to try and get this here as soon as possible. And we'll be there soon enough. Nice one. Dave Payne there, who ironically was anything but a pain. Now, if you're wondering why we're in the least imaginative backdrop ever, it's because that's going to be some kind of nursing room like a creche facility, and Walsh wanted us to mention it. So there you are, it is done. Now, back when television that was to do with football was genuinely really, really good, the great Jimmy Greaves would tickle the intellectuals among us by repeatedly saying it's a fanny old game. And indeed, it is. But at other times, it can be deadly serious. And it's for the latter part of this equation that we now go to Marv for a brand new series of Bang Goes the Marv. Here's Marv. Hi. This year saw the global success of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge and for all the criticism and cynicism that it invited onto itself, you can't really knock the amount of money that it raised for charity. And that got me thinking. Why don't FC do something like this? Why not jump on the bandwagon? All we need is something inexpensive, something fun, and something that's easy to recreate at home. So I thought I'd try out a few things, you know, test the water and upload them and see if I could get people sharing and catching on to the idea. It's not been successful. First up was the face on the hot electric hob challenge. Thanks to Ben Hughes for the nomination. Uh, I've made my donation and uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Barry O'Fries, uh, Archie Workman and Robert Kopp. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Is it definitely on? Yeah, yeah, it's on. Okay. It's on. Right. Here we go. Next, the eating chewing gum off the street challenge. Thanks to Ben Hughes for the nomination. Uh, I've made my donation. I'd, um, I'd like to nominate uh, Joe Schnitzel, uh, Sandy Pumps and Sue Coffey. Here we go. Then there was the most dull version of the Harlem Shake challenge. Finally, we tried raising money through sharing music. Swap an album and donate some money. It seemed relatively straightforward. Hi, this is an album swap. Uh, this is where you swap albums with friends, and uh, thanks to Ben for the nomination. Your CD is in the post, and I hope you make your donation like I made mine. Uh, I'd like to nominate um, Pat Quid, uh, Jackie Pot, and uh, Sarah Blizzard. Um, Anyway, get involved. Hashtag an album swap. Oh, if you oh, it's it's quite some of the some of the words come out differently, and now right now I've seen it. What do you mean? It, it just says an album swap. Yeah, no, you can sort of. Is the hashtag? No, I d it's just it. In, yeah, if you look at it, you can read it a different way. I don't get the right. Yeah, I just don't think we could. No, I don't think we can use this. Yeah, maybe not, eh? To make a donation to FC United, you can go online to fc-utd.co.uk and head to the donate pages.
you can send an email to office at fc-utd.co.uk to discuss specific arrangements or simply make a phone call to 0161 273 8950. FC United welcome standing orders and even contributing just £5 per month would make a massive difference. FC United, our club, our future. Be a part of it. Cheers, Marv. I'll drink to that, or I would do if I had a drink. And coincidentally, you might well be drinking off one of these because everything here on site is going to be recycled and turned into things you can drink off or similar or eat off or do whatever you want, really. But the point is it's going to be recycled, just like much of this show is half of the time. That brings it to an end for another month. Don't forget to join us at the start of October for our Autumn Almanac special. That's designed solely to get you through the early rounds of the Manchester Premier and the Dutton Cup and all things like that. Come on, we can do this, etc. Big thanks to all my guests, Andy Walsh, Dave Payne, obviously Dr K, and probably even Marv. Don't forget to watch all the views and highlights and all that kind of carry on on scum.tv. And if you follow the same on Twitter, you'll find all kinds of hashtag fun. That's it from everyone here at Broadhurst Park. Cheers. Now, thanks a lot. Ta-da, mind the tramps. See ya.